This year marks the 80th anniversary of the outbreak of World War II, a titanic struggle that saw close to a million Australians serve in the armed forces. The stories of those men and women have been an inseparable part of Anzac Day and our national identity. But, one of, the one, but of the one million veterans, only a handful remain. Keith Fowler, Chook, to his mates, spent three years as a prisoner of war, forced by his captors to work on the notorious Thai Burma Railway. The slightest hint of defiance could mean death, a lesson the Australians learned early from a Japanese guard they dubbed Bill the Bastard. Well, we, we, well he was a bastard. <laughs> he was a thorough one. <laughs> I mean, he'd built you for the least little thing, you know. Keith Fowler is one of almost a million Australians who served in World War II. Of those who fought overseas, 30,000 never returned. Now the years are inevitably and rapidly moving through the ranks of the rest. In June 2017, the Department of Veteran Affairs had 23,000 World War II vets on its books. In June 2018, it was 13,278, the very last of their generation. Well, they gave so much um, at a difficult time and they presented uh, Australia to us virtually on a platter. What, what they delivered to our nation, I, I don't think we can ever say. Uh, we can't provide them enough recognition for that. It is the stories of former POWs that are, in many ways, a defining feature of World War II. Historian Robin Price says the numbers tell the tale. 4,000 Australians were taken prisoner in the first war. In the second, it was over 30,000. Each of their stories is different and each experience of captivity is different and you lose that mosaic of memory uh, when those people go. There'll be books and diaries and films so we won't forget. But it's one thing to read about the night Norm Ginn's Lancaster bomber was shot down over Berlin. It's something else to hear him recall floating down to the snow-covered German countryside. Only one sound in the near-perfect silence. At that stage, I could just hear our bombers crazy fading in the distance, and of course that was a pretty lonely feeling, as you can imagine, not knowing what was going to happen. Norm spent two years in a Nazi prison camp. No commemoration is static, Anzac Day included. There are no World War I veterans left today. But Robin Pryor believes that when the last World War II veteran goes, it will be the most profound change to Anzac Day. The chance to see those people from the Second World War, the most important war, I would argue, that we'd ever fought in, uh, will be fleeting and will only last for a few more years. Simon Royal, ABC News.